Hello, Michael Fackrell here. Today, I'd like to speak with you from the letter of 1 John, beginning at chapter 1. I'm going to read in the Good News translation of the Bible because I think it brings out the sense of the uh, words very clearly. And uh, you can check it, this out in any other translation. For example, the New King James Version of the Bible, or the King James, whichever you prefer. But I think this gives the sense very clearly. It says, we write to you about the word of life which has existed from the very beginning. So actually we know from John's Gospel that he's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the word, the word was made flesh. We've heard it, we really should say we've heard him. We've seen it with our eyes. Yes, we've seen it and our hands have touched it. They've touched him. They've touched Jesus. They've heard Jesus. They've seen him with their eyes. When this life became visible, we saw it, so we speak of it and tell you about the eternal life which was with the Father and was made known to us. Really, it's saying that Jesus is that eternal life. And this is what John is writing about. So this is really something to confirm the gospel. This is something to explain the gospel, to make it clear things about the gospel. And there's a purpose for John writing. He says, what we've seen and heard, we announce to you also, so that you will join with us in the fellowship that we have with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So the purpose of John's writing is that there would be a real fellowship uh, between John and his readers, but also between the readers and God, the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, which John already has. Join with us in that fellowship we have with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. What is fellowship? It's not just sharing words together, it's sharing life. And uh, that is what happens when we have fellowship with God. We share in the life of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes in, makes us a partaker of the divine nature. And we are really changed because we start to take on the character of Jesus from the inside. And so that is what John is writing about. He's wanting us to partake in that character and life of Jesus by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God living in us. And he says, we write this in order that our joy may be complete. But uh, in the footnotes it says, and in most translations it says, that your joy may be complete. John had a heart for his readers. He wanted them to be filled with joy. And that's the plan of God for our lives. It says, rejoice always. And uh, in order for us to rejoice in the Lord, we need to know the Lord. And that's why uh, John gets on to this next part of his message, which I think is very powerful. And I think goes against a lot of what is taught in evangelical churches, to be honest. So listen to this. Now the message that we've heard from his son and announced is this, God is light and there's no darkness in him at all. So we're not hearing about a God who's both good and evil, who sends evil things along, who ordains evil, but God is light, God is goodness. There's no darkness at all in him. See, if there's any darkness in this world, if there's any spiritual darkness, it's because of a free will choice to reject the light, to reject God. And so actually darkness is the absence of light uh, when there's spiritual darkness it's because Jesus isn't welcomed into that place and so God is pure God is holy God is right and so here's the conclusion that John makes if then we say that we have fellowship with him and yet at the same time live in darkness we're lying both in our words and in our actions so there are some people out there that will say you can live in darkness, you can actually live in sin and you are still right with God because of the blood of Jesus. And uh, he seems to be denying this, John. He says, if we ha say we have fellowship with him, if we have this close relationship with him, but at the same time we're living in darkness, we're rejecting uh, the light of God's word, we're rejecting, we're rejecting Jesus, then it says we're lying both in our words and in our actions. So that's very strong. Uh, people say, well, what about the blood of Jesus? What about the grace of God? But look at what he says in verse 7. There's a condition for the blood of Jesus washing us. It says, if we live in the light just as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from every sin. So we need to live in the light. What does that mean? It doesn't mean live perfectly. What it means is that we're exposing ourselves to the light of God's word and we're being honest with God and hopefully honest with each other. God wants us to be honest with each other in the way we do our relationships. And so we need to be honest and confess our sins to one another and to God as appropriate. And that will cause real relationship to exist between us and other Christians. 
And then also the blood of Jesus will purify us from every sin. It doesn't say the blood of Jesus will purify us whether we walk in the light or not. It doesn't say that the blood of Jesus will purify us whether we love each other or not. It says that if we live in the light, as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship and then the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin. But some people say, no, I don't need to confess my sins because I really don't have any sins. They make a faith declaration about it. But then in the next verse, John says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. So all of us have got uh, some sin unless we have already made it to heaven and we're already in the presence of the Lord permanently. Uh, even John was admitting that he was uh, somewhat flawed. Uh, I don't think that he was flawed in a, in a super serious way. I think he was a very holy man and uh, history bears that out. He was the apostle that really knew the love of God and yet uh, he was not perfect in that love and none of us are. But if we say we have no sin, we don't, if we say we never fall short in the area of love, we're deceiving ourselves, there's no truth in us. But if we confess our sins to God, Sin is basically a violation of love, a violation of faith. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of love is sin. If we confess our sins to God, well, if we confess our sins, He will keep His promise and do what's right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. There's a beautiful promise. We can confess our sins. When your conscience tells you that you have done the wrong thing, please don't trust in a doctrine that says that you don't need to confess your sin. What you need to do is just con confess it, you speak it out, admit to God what you've done and say, God, that wasn't good what I did. That wasn't good how I thought. Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Father, cleanse me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. By coming to the light like this, by confessing our sins like this, we actually receive the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. Otherwise, if we cover our sins, we won't prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will find mercy, the Bible says in Proverbs 28.13. If we say we've not sinned, we make a liar out of God and his word's not in us. So, I don't know who would say they've not sinned. Probably people that uh, have a really exalted opinion of themselves. Uh, I don't know many people like this that would say this, but definitely the word of God says that we've all sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So in summary, God is light, God is pure and perfect. And if we want to have fellowship with him, we need to live in the light where God is. We need to come to the light, which means that you know, maybe our deeds will be exposed. Maybe we expose them only to God. That's fair enough. But we need to do that so that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from sin. And that's something that, that goes on in our Christian life. It's something we need to keep doing uh, because we do fall short, especially the standard of God's love and it's God's desire that we come into fellowship with him, which means that we receive his love, that we walk in love, and that we be loving people. So I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, this is what God's calling us into. If we want fellowship with God, it's going to be by walking in love. It's going to be by embracing the love of God. And we'll see that John's got other things to say about the love of God. If you keep reading his letter, you'll find out that love is centrally important in John's message. And this is really the litmus test of genuine Christianity. All right, well, I hope you like this video. God bless you. Uh, and uh, feel free to comment on it or share it or interact with me. And remember that we are to love in three ways. We're to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We're to love one another and we're also to love the lost. Because Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So may the Lord help you and me to do this well by his grace and by his spirit. Amen.